This is a uh, real artifact that I've got here. This is a JVC 1980 color video camera. Uh, this is actually a consumer color video camera. Um, those were around at that point. Um, I think they weren't universal yet. Like they were still black and white ones. Um, this one is still definitely early for color and it's um, quite a unit, let me tell you. Uh, I was gonna do a longer video about this initially, but then I started playing with it to try and get ready for it and I found out that um, it's got some problems. So uh, I already started taking it apart and I thought, well, I should probably shoot a video of this. So here we are. So the problem is that the uh, power input on the back seems a little shaky. Um, so there's a DC jack back here and there's a power switch. So the power switch is jammed, like it won't move at all. And um, when I start the thing up, I'm able to get it to work sometimes if I sort of jiggle and press on things, um, but it's inconsistent. And then the last time I tried to use it, uh, it just turned on and off a bunch of times and then shut off and wouldn't start again. And I'm worried that it might be broken, broken. Um, I'm just gonna open it up and see if there's any obvious problems, maybe replace that switch or bypass it um, and see if that DC jack has uh, bad solder joints. So this shouldn't take too long, um, but you'll get a peek at this camera, uh, which is a, a really beautiful one, if you ask me. Most of the cameras I have of this type are a lot fancier, like they got a lot of controls and whatnot. This doesn't. It's got um, start recording and auto gain control, and that's it. And uh, other than that, it just uh, just outputs video through this jack on the back, and that's all there is to it. Takes power, puts that video into the line. So I'm going to start getting in here. Um, we have to uh, first take apart uh, the viewfinder assembly, which is <laughs> attached in a very unusual fashion. It's got uh, a screw-on bracket up here without a captive bolt. Uh, and then it's got another one over here on the side. Really long bolt. Okay, and then slides out. Okay. Now just real quick. <laughs> This thing is really an artifact. I think it predates the existence of mini DIN connectors. So it's got something real strange going on. Let me show you. The multi-pin connector on here has just bare pins hanging out. Like they really are. They're just, they're hanging out there. There's no protective covering around them. And then there's just some acrylic at the base here to keep them aligned. And then a peg in the middle. Um, let me get you in close there. It's hard to see, but the peg in the middle actually has a little key. Has a little protrusion so you can't plug it in the wrong orientation. Like this is buck wild. I've never seen anything like this. This is completely <laughs> wow. There's these little rubber caps, plastic caps to protect it. So you gotta make sure you don't bend the pins getting the cap on. Okay, next step here, I gotta get the uh viewfinder bracket off. There's this flat head here, and you just pop that a little bit. I don't have a full size flat head. And uh, screw that out. This hole actually serves double duty. Um, normally the viewfinder bracket's in there. And then this huge battery pack goes in and sits on top of that. And this one screw holds them both in. It's, uh, yeah. Go ahead and get the lens off. It's got that same funky plug. And the lens is an old, um, I think this is called C-mount and it just spins forever. Oh, cable really gets in the way. So that is the face of the imaging tube. Uh, it's not solid state. This is a tube-based camera. Um, not for the electronics. Those are, those are transistorized, uh, but the actual image sensing element is a tube. Um, I'm gonna do a big video about those at some point. I keep threatening to do a big video about those at some point. I think I covered it a bit in my JVC video. I don't know how much of this I need to take off, so I'm just gonna go with as little as possible. The side doesn't quite wanna come off. I wonder, um, you know, I'll bet, oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, this, that comes off. And then, well, I thought we'd have more screws, but I guess, oh, there we go, okay. Oof. Ouch. Uh, you can see there's a tube down in there. And uh, I don't want to get anywhere near that. <laughs> it's also a high voltage power supply for that. I don't want to get near that either. Now, I did take two screws out on the back. This got loose. 
and I can't pull it out, but I wonder if maybe with just a little bit more effort. Yeah, it looks like uh, this screw right here. Now I just had this powered up, so I'm a little worried about residual energy. Like, that is a concern. Took that screw out, but there's still, I think there's one on the other side, so that's not surprising. Okay. So there's the video tube, and boy, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a hefty goober. I'm told this is not technically the tube. This is actually the yoke assembly, and the tube itself is much smaller. I don't care. That's still a huge assembly. Like, there's this entire thing here is all maintenance and, you know, padding for the tube. But as you can see, this is uh, plenty transistorized. See, that's right there. That's a transistor. Uh, that's some sort of integrated circuit, it looks like. So this thing is, um, you know, it's, it's up to 80 spec. Okay, so that's loose. Can we gently, yeah, okay, we can gently pull this away. So with as hard as this thing is to get into and, and do anything with, um, and as dense as it is in there, I don't really want to go any deeper. So this is really the most likely problem component, this switch here, because it's, it's good and jammed. It won't move. So I'm thinking of just soldering across the contacts on the back so it's permanently closed. Um, That'll eliminate that as a problem because I'm just going to apply power and remove it externally because I run this off a of bench power supply anyway. Um, so I'll just unplug it when I want to turn it off. Other issue is actually with the jack. Um, that could be problematic and that looks harder to get to. Yeah, see, um, this whole panel here is actually, these are mounted through a casting. This is all one aluminum casting. So in order to get to the jack, um, or the VTR plug, I would have to get all these circuit boards out of the way. Although, now that I notice it, this here is a plastic hinge. It's designed so you can take the screws out down here at the bottom and then fold the whole thing down for service. So, I'll give that a shot. Move that, and here goes. Ooh-wee. Oof. Wow. So one problem is it doesn't stay open on its own. You know, it wants to, to fall closed. I guess I could take it off completely. Like I could take the plugs out of the board and lay the board over to the side. The jacks that I want to get to are here and here. And there's screws coming through to the inside. Um, there's a screw thread there, which means there's a screw coming through like this. So that means that the screw head is buried under this plate. So that means this plate is probably glued on. Yep, there we go. Yeah, all right, there it is. Of course, now that I'm here, um, before I go any further, uh, I think the bigger question is, could this jack be bad, or is it more likely the power switch? And I think it's more likely the power switch. Although it's, it's possible for a DC jack to go bad, even if it's a um, cable mount instead of PC board mount, it's pretty rare. And if we look down in here, it's pretty clear to me that there's no PC board down there. Like down there, there's no there's no circuit board. Um, and everything in here, pretty much, uh, jack-wise, is uh, hanging off wires rather than connected to a printed circuit board. So I don't think that DC jack is broken, because that's pretty much their failure mode. They snap off a PC board. Otherwise, they're, they're kind of bulletproof. So I'm not going to disturb the jack. I'm just going to short out this plug um, and put it back together. Gonna use this ESD safe uh, trimmer tool to prop this up. Maybe there and there. Yeah, that's safe. All right, just a dab. Now this is an excellent example of what you shouldn't do. See how I'm just trying to solder bridge this in midair? There goes a blob of solder that just dropped off into the circuitry. And I didn't notice it at the time uh, I should have used a piece of wire to bridge these contacts. So there's now a little blob of solder rolling around inside of my vintage camera. And if I don't open it up again and get it out, it could short something out and blow it up. So if you want to avoid that heartache and rework, make sure you do it the right way the first time. Use a piece of wire, 
don't try and half-ass it like this. Okay, I thought for a second I might have uh, misjudged the gap between the pins. I had, but uh, it looks like it bridged okay, so we're done. Okay, let's uh, get that little uh, nameplate back on. Yeah, that's not going to hold on anymore, so I'll also get some rubber cement. Goo gone, and goo on. There was more residue on there than I thought. Okay, there we go. Oh, wow. I made a mess already. Good lord. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God, that's awful. I'm not good with this stuff. Okay, all right. I think I did it. Oh, God. Now there's some coming through. Ah, it's making it worse. Well, I guess... I can goog on this after it's all and the stuff is dried, so. We're good, I'm sure of it. There we go. It's good. We're good here. Okay, let's get the sides back on. Ah, God damn it. You can't pick it up by the sides until the screws are in. Dumbass. The reason I'm putting this all the way back together instead of just testing it in situ is because if it doesn't work, there won't be much else I can do. So I might as well get all the screws back in before I feel like it's not worth putting all the screws back in because I destroyed it. I speak from experience. All right, there we are. Done, theoretically. Oh, I was about to put the lens on. I realized, ugh. Oh God, look at that. A big hideous fingerprint right on the front element. Did I do that? I couldn't have done that. Much better. Viewfinder time. God, these connectors. They're so fragile. Let's get some juice in here. All right, ready to go. I turn the power on and we'll see whether the lights in the viewfinder come on. Hey, hey, there's an image in there. Okay, and I'm, I'm wiggling this, nothing's happening, nothing's happening there, so I think that fixed our problem, and the camera still works. Hell yeah. Next part, we need to get video out of this. So I've got this jack on the back here and I was lucky enough to find a compatible connector. Um, I say lucky because it's not a common one. See, this is a high rows 12 pin. It's very similar to the uh, EIAJ 11 pin. Um, that's uh, this one here. Uh, this is used for a lot of uh, consumer video cameras in the 70s and 80s, 60s too, come to think of it. It's a very old connector. It's it's widely available, still kind of expensive. This one is a lot weirder. I can't even find a pinout for it. But I was able to get video out of this camera by um, using my scope to find the video signal and just clipping onto that. The quality was crap, though, and I was lucky enough to find this cable, which has the right connector and has BNCs on it. So uh, as long as these correspond to the correct pinout or I can fix the pinout, then this will work for this camera. So let's find that out now. Oh my God, I didn't put the cap on the rubber cement and I just dumped it all over my desk. I shouldn't be allowed to have this stuff. Okay, uh, we're set to jet. Um, we got our uh, little piece of wire here, which we're gonna hook in a scope probe. And uh, all we got to do is just poke that in here till we find the signal we're looking for. We're going to power this up and we're drawing one amp. So that means we're on. And now we're just going to watch the scope and we're going to look for a signal. Now, I think I think I already found it. I think it's down here on the last row. Oh, yeah, that looks like it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's NTSC. And the way we can actually verify this um, 
even without hooking up to a television. Like suppose that's that's difficult. Um, the way we can verify this is by changing the image. So I happen to know that the image that's on the camera screen right now is a, a flat white because you're seeing the side of this case here. Now, if you look at the oscilloscope, you can see that there's a increase in amplitude towards the center here and then back down. If I reach out with my hand and block the lens, you can see the amplitude goes down and back up. So you can actually see the video image. In fact, if I block the left side of the lens only, only that part dips down. And as I move to the right, you can see the image of my hand in the signal. So yep, that's the video signal. This has a microphone and a microphone input on the back. I do want to find that. So let's just plug in there. We know the video is the uh, the left pin on the bottom row. So let's go looking for the audio. Uh, 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 not sure what that is. Not sure what that is. Uh, hello. Oh, is that what we're looking for? It might be. Hello. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's our audio output. It's uh, probably a little faint because I'm not talking very closely into the mic. Let me uh, tilt this up here. Hello. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's our audio pin. So those are the only two I really need, the one video pin and the one audio pin, um, because I'm going to supply power externally. I don't care about the uh, trigger input for the uh, tape recorder. Um, so uh, that's really all I need for what I'm doing. So let's unplug that for the moment. If we're very lucky, the pin out of this cable will be the same as the one on the camera. We can just use it as is. If we're not lucky, we could have pins that are uh, soldered together and could blow up the camera if we plug it in. Um, we could have uh, uh, these uh, center pins going to the wrong pins. They could be going to multiple pins at once. There's no telling. And it's hard to test that comprehensively without cutting the cable open, but let's at least find out whether these connect to the pins we want. The notch goes down. I decided that the video was on the leftmost pin on the bottom, so that's the rightmost pin here. Okay, and the blue one. Uh, yeah, this is not pinned out the way I want it to be. Dang it. That means I have to open this and resolder it. I didn't want to do that. And of course, in order to get the thing off, you've got to line up this collar and then use an incredibly tiny hex head. Obviously, of course. Okay, I thought I was out of luck. I was going to have to cancel the video, but I found this little tiny um, screw uh, that's part of an eyeglass repair kit, and it turns out it fits into the extremely tiny hex head that holds this connector together. So, ah, uh, miracle of miracles. Now, of course, I just have to actually get the cable out of the connector. Okay, this was baffling, but it turns out that it's screwed in there. So after you take the little hex head out, you have to unscrew the outer body. Wow. Ugh, it's so hard to get in here. The strain relief just doesn't want to move. I'm not sure if I can work with this little clearance, but anyway, that's what we're up against. Uh, there. There it is. Uh, we can see that's the green, red, and blue coax. Just need to desolder them and move them. So it does look like the uh, green one is wired up the way it's supposed to be, now that I look at it, because the ground is above, video is below. Yeah, that checks out. So it's just the other two that need to be fixed. So I shouldn't have cut the insulation off that. Whoops. Okay, I think I did it. Let's uh, let's check the pin out. Red should be the audio, and it is. I wasn't sure what to do with the blue one, so I just hooked it up to the VTR activate signal, which I'm probably never going to use. Okay, and that's it there. Okay, camera's on. TV's on. Fingers crossed, nothing blows up. All right. There it is. There's our picture. Let's see if we can get some audio here. This is the direct feed from the camera itself and the microphone that's built into it. Um, 
It doesn't look any better on a real CRT. I have a PVM here, and it looks like garbage on there as well. Uh, the light sensitivity of cameras of this era was really, really low. So despite this room being really well lit, you can't really see me. The lens is on a super fast lens either, but really it's just universal for cameras of this era. They just needed tons and tons and tons of light in order to get a decent image. So if I pointed out the window, I might be able to get something reasonable. I proceeded to do just that, but in the process of doing visual tests, I discovered some behavior that warranted reshooting so that I could cover it in more depth, and at that point I'd run out of storage space and time, so keep an eye out for part two where I'll show off this camera's performance and quirks, and thanks for watching.